Have you ever wondered what's going on with this crazy world of digital collectibles? Well, today we're going to go over a very beginner's guide of how to get into digital collecting. Now, this world can be incredibly complex the deeper you go. So we're just going to touch the very surface level of everything you should know about. And then we'll go into deep, detailed topics later on in other videos. So let's jump into it. And a great place to start is defining the differences and similarities between traditional art and digital art. They're a lot more similar than a lot of people think. One of the biggest similarities between them is they all start from a core, fundamentally creative human idea that blossoms into something else. They simply just use different tools. The creative process of making digital art involves a bunch of different methods. So if we're gonna get into this whole traditional art versus digital art debate, we should start back at the beginning by defining what is art simply. So just to keep everything very textbook, we'll use the Britannica definition of art, which reads, something that is created with imagination and skill and that is beautiful or that expresses important ideas or feelings. I don't think anyone can argue with that. So much like traditional art, there's millions of ways for creative artists to express their personality through digital art. And, and a good thing to keep in mind is that since there's such a vast array of different kinds of digital art out there, you got to be careful not to lump everything in one category. There's categories like generative art, AI art, 3D renderings, pixel art, digital paintings, illustration, virtual reality art, video games, and it's just so much more. This list really goes on forever. Even this video you're watching right here is considered a form of digital art potentially. So digital art gets a lot of flack for being quote new and not established, but it actually dates back to 1950s with Harold Cohen and Vera Molnar were among some of the first pioneers of computational artistic programming, taking the first steps into today what is a very thriving movement around AI art. We can't talk about getting into digital art without talking about digital collectibles and these are one of the biggest things popping on the scene of art right now. So to talk about the other all, you have to start by what really made this movement change. That would be digital collectible tokens in the form of non-fungible tokens, a completely new technology that revolutionized the scene. And as soon as that switch flipped, the game was on and everyone was at it. It's also very important to remember that non-fungible tokens or NFTs, as you may call them, aren't actually the artwork that people are talking about. Imagine as if it was like a presentation you'd present. It's a PDF, NFT, JPEG, PNG, File formats, not art, but along with this new file format, but brought the ability to sell, trade, and exchange digital goods in a verifiable way, which is essential for the commerce of art. And now for any naysayers that are still not convinced that digital art is real and worth collecting, I'll just give you this example. Is a camera not digital? Is photography not art? Whatever happened to artists that painted pictures before, and then the art of photography comes out, and now you can snap a picture of someone and have a portrait instantly. Therefore, it should have nullified the need to ever paint a picture of anyone, ever. But did it? No. These days, some of the most expensive artworks in history are painted portraits. So we'll see what happens in a couple hundred years when technology is advanced and some of the first digital artworks are now some of the most legendary ever. Just as the invention of the camera and digital camera made it much easier to capture a digital portrait of someone, the new inventions and advancements in the world of digital art have unlocked another level of creativity and involvement people can have in their artwork. So before we go any further, we gotta slow it down for a second and just explain to you why you should invest in digital art. And no, we're not gonna talk about any specific reasons of this asset class versus this. It's mostly just about why do you wanna be a part of this world? And there's really only three reasons you may wanna be here. One, you love the artwork and really wanna support what the artist does and buying into the project helps them and the entire ecosystem of digital art grow. Two, your friends are into it and you really want to show off and be a part of your community. And now with this new world of digital art is so much easier than ever to be a part of digital communities and really show off and have a lot larger community around it. That is a great reason to be involved in this space. And three, if you really are here just for the purposes of investment, I can't stress this enough. Do your own research and collect responsibly. Let's move on. Now the next step, now that you know why you want to be collecting digital art, is to know the collections. Now a great way to think of it is kind of like baseball cards or Pokemon cards or Magic the Gathering. Now these little pieces of paper that you all know of are super collectible and incredibly expensive at times. And they come in a wide array of series and packs and that's much like a lot of the digital collectibles you'll find online. And if you're really looking to take this industry seriously, I recommend doing a lot of research into the different projects that are out there and find some that really resonate with you. And I say diversify your assets. Even just from a pure collecting perspective, having a wide array of different pieces really makes it a very cohesive and full and rich collection. A lot of these collections have deep communities and value adds behind the digital art that you get to receive. So I encourage you to do as much research and ask as many questions to the people you know as possible because there's truly a plethora. I can't even imagine. There's so many digital art projects out there that I'm sure there is one for you. You just have to go out there and look for one that really suits your needs. 
and join in. Now, where do you even get this stuff? Do you go down to the local digital art gallery in your local city and uh, look at the fine pieces on the walls like you would with traditional art? No, not really. Galleries still do exist, but they look a little different. Some of the biggest ones you may have heard are OpenSeas, Rarible, and Super Rare. The, now, these are digital marketplaces where artists can post all of their work and watch trading happen in real time. Now, you can buy off these things, but they also offer a lot of valuable information about each individual project and the history of each piece. Now, these places are a wealth of knowledge, so please dig deep into whichever one you are looking into. Find one that is specific. They have great ones for each different niche of collecting what you're trying to get into. Find the marketplace that best suits you, and please, I stress this as much as I possibly can, do your own research. I know a lot of people don't read all the terms and conditions when they sign up for something, but please, in this space, it is a must. You have to be prepared and read that fine print to make sure that you and your digital collectibles are safe in this new wild west of digital collecting. <laughs> so you just got your first digital collectible or set of digital collectibles. Now you got to be wondering, what am I supposed to do with all of these pieces? Do I just look at them on my phone? Do I just open a desktop tab and keep it on the left side of my screen forever? as a reminder throughout the day of that it exists? How do I interact with this? How do I show it off? Now that is a great question and you have a bunch of options. One, yes, you can just keep it on a tab on your desktop and look at it and know that it's yours. But what's the fun in that? Some of the more interesting ways you can participate and show off your digital piece of art would be to display it in your home through the use of prints. That could be posters, framed pictures, or canvases. You could hook up a projector, have a complex light display of all your digital collectibles, or you could even get one of the super cool art screen TVs to display one or even all of your amazing collection of art in your house. On top of that, your public wallet can be viewed by other people. So it can be a great way for everyone to see your entire collection all in one place. Other than that, a lot of people have taken to using digital art as a profile picture online, as it seems to spark a lot of connection and conversation in certain online groups. So if you're now the proud owner of a board eight crypto punk or crypto pharaoh or whatever collectible or piece of artwork you want to show off feel free to make it your avatar and it's a great conversation starter when talking to anyone online now we talked about this earlier but you have to be cautious in this space it is riddled with ip and copyright theft there is a million copies and people trying to scam and trying to take what is not theirs now people that are new to this space maybe like you may not be aware of some of the new protocols and best practices that you need to follow we'll have a whole separate video series about this that is coming up soon so if you want to know more stay tuned here. We got you covered. But the short Coles notes of it is always check for authenticity before you buy something and please only deal in reputable certified exchanges to keep your stuff secure. So you found a collection that really speaks to you, but you can't pick which one. A lot of these digital art collections have a vast quantity of assets to pick. Whereas traditionally an artist may only have only had a couple to maybe a couple dozen different pieces of artwork you could choose from to collect. A lot of these digital collections have thousands, tens of thousands, or even more different possibilities for digital collectibles. So how would you ever know to, which ones to pick that are rare or are cool. In short note, just look out for whatever is unique. Look for styles or attributes that aren't seen often as stuff that isn't seen often is a bit more rare. And beyond the visual aspect of things, you have to be on the lookout for a good story and cultural impact. As this is the premise of what makes art collectible in the first place. We're humans, we like to connect, and art is a reflection of us connecting. So much like some artists can sign a urinal and it becomes one of the most famous pieces of art ever made, it's not always about the quality of the visuals, it's about the story that surrounds it. So I encourage you to read in and learn more about the pieces you're about to collect. Another great thing that you have to keep in mind is that this space of digital art is super new and things are advancing very fast and to be prepared that we don't really know what's happening in the next six months, year, two years, or five years. So I'd say you always have to stay on the top of things and be prepared for what is coming next and the new technology. As the platform that you use to store, keep, and transfer your digital collectibles now, may not be top of mind in a couple years or even exist at all. So always be prepared to transfer and keep hold of your collection when needed. A offline cold wallet is one of the best ways you could possibly do this as it's super secure and no one can ever touch it but you. Don't worry, we'll talk about more on cold wallets in another video. So that's it. You now know the beginnings about collecting digital art. I know there's so much more and you have so many more questions you have to ask, but please give us some time. We're making those videos, they'll come out soon. But now you're ready to go and start learning and collecting in this amazing space of digital art. I'm so excited for you to enter this new world. There's so many possibilities. It is super fun. The deeper you dive, the more fun you will have. All I can say is welcome. We are happy you are here. And if you are interested in starting your own digital art collection, I can't recommend enough Momentable. It is an absolutely amazing platform for collecting digital art. They work with a ton of museum grade artists that have a bunch 
of amazing artwork. You can get three months of their monthly art subscription for free, limited time, limited slots. It is a super great deal. I can encourage you to go over and check it out if it's still available. I would definitely sign up and tell your friends about it because it won't last long and it will be going up soon. We thank you so much for watching today. If you learned something today, maybe hit that like button. If you're interested in hearing more stories about art, pop culture, and Web3, you might want to subscribe. We got a lot more coming. And if you think any of your friends might benefit from this video, we'd really appreciate if you could share it with one of them. Sit them down, make them watch it. It'll do them some good. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.